Great. Well, thank you very much. And thanks for, uh, for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you. Um, by the way, uh, thank you very much for mentioning um, my background and for mentioning my book. But I do want to mention that the book that was shown is one that's actually a bit on the old side. This is my brand new book. It's called Your Body in Balance. And this is what I'm going to be really speaking about today. And let me encourage you to have a look at it because what we're doing and what I'm going to talk about today is something that goes several steps beyond what you may have heard with regard to diet. The old approach to diet was you eat a bad food and you get some condition. You eat something fattening, you get overweight. Um, you eat something with saturated fat, your cholesterol goes up. That's, that's all true enough, but we can go to another level. And that is this, everything in your body, every function in your body is controlled by hormones. And we now know that foods will control your hormones if you use them the right way. And it's really not that hard. And I have to say, I got really excited about it. And I hope you will too. And so that's the reason I wrote Your Body in Balance. So um, if you're interested in it, I'll talk about it again a little bit later. Um, but let me jump in. I want to talk about Your Body in Balance, the new science of food, hormones, and health. Let me start with the hormone insulin. You know insulin. Insulin is the one that people talk about when they've got diabetes or something. Well, what are they talking about? What they're talking about is that insulin controls your blood sugar. And it can get off track for lots of people. Back in 2003, the National Institutes of Health funded my research team to see if we could, could do a better job with type 2 diabetes. And what we learned is that we have more control of, over insulin than we ever thought possible. And from there, I'm gonna talk with you about controlling estrogens, thyroid hormones, and some general principles that are gonna hopefully bring your, your health to a new level. Okay, but here is back to our NIH trial. Uh, the question was, can we control insulin in a better way? And what NIH uh, asked us to do was to test a portion controlled diet. That's a pretty, um, conventional diet for diabetes versus a plant-based diet. And the portion controlled diet was three things. Cut calories to lose weight. Keep carbohydrate fairly steady and limit bad fats. Is this sounding kind of familiar? Person has diabetes, they go to see the, the doctor and the doctor says, to lose weight, you need to cut calories. And the patient says, I tried that, but by about Wednesday, I'm ready to eat the sofa. Hold that thought. The plant-based diet was very different. It did not cut calories at all. And it didn't limit portions or, or even require people to, uh, to limit carbohydrate. It did three different things. No animal products, minimize oils. I'll tell you about, uh, about why in a minute. And third, favor low glycemic index foods. Don't get hung up on, on the, this technical sounding term. A high glycemic index food, something like white bread. All that means is that it spikes your blood sugar. You eat a couple slices of bread, your blood sugar goes up, that, that, that happens. Uh, but if it's rye bread, it doesn't go up so much. Or pumpernickel, even more gentle, that's lower glycemic index. So that's all it is. The low glycemic index food, foods are things like beans, uh, fruit, um, pasta that's not overcooked. And if it's overcooked, then it's higher glycemic index. You get the idea. Okay, very simple. So to cut to the chase, what this study showed is that people following the conventional diet, the portion control diet, that's the red line. When we track their A1C values, that's an index of your blood sugar control. It dropped, it dropped about 0 0.4 absolute percentage points, which is good. That's the red line. But the blue line is the people on the plant-based diet, vegan diet, and their drop in A1C was three times greater. It was a little over 1.2 absolute percentage points on average. In other words, this is not only the best way to change your diet for type 2 diabetes to get your blood sugar down. It was also better than the typical oral medications that you pick up at the pharmacy. So let me share with you one of our first research participants. This was Vance. Vance had been a policeman here in Washington, D.C. Then he worked in a bank. He came in to see us and he began the plant-based diet. And he said something rather remarkable, I have to say. He said, you know, this diet's the easiest diet, diet I've ever had. Um, and I thought, wait a minute, how can uh, going vegan be easy? Don't people think of that as meaning you've got to acquire a taste for folk music and wear tie-dyed clothes? <laughs> and he said, no, no, it's, it's instead of meat sauce on my spaghetti, I have tomato sauce. 
instead of a meat-based chili, I have a bean chili. This It's real easy. And I don't have to cut my portions. I don't have to count calories. I don't have to keep track of my carbs. I don't keep track of anything. Very, very easy. Over a year, he lost about 60 pounds. He stopped his diabetes medications. And his A1C fell from 9.5, which is high, down to 5.3, which is absolutely normal. That's right, it's not diabetes, it's not pre-diabetes. 5.3 is a normal level. And when we got that value, it raised a really important question. Does this mean that diabetes can be cured? Does this mean that it just goes away? Now at the time, this was a radical idea because no one was even trying to get rid of diabetes at that time. The whole idea was just to slow the progression. But here we started to see not only in this individual, but in many others since that time, and now we see this as a matter of routine, the blood sugar control going back to normal, people needing less and less medicine, sometimes getting off them completely. As you can imagine, this was an exciting breakthrough. So hold that thought. Now, how can this work? How is it that diabetes can actually somehow get better? Well, hold on to your, or kind of hold on to your seats. I, I wanna show you what actually causes diabetes. And if you're doing something else, if you're texting with somebody or talking with somebody, just give me your undivided attention for the next two minutes. I wanna show you the cause of type two diabetes. And I want you to share this with other people because everybody gets this wrong. Um, the science that has come in it's really been coming in for now for about the past two decades, but this is really, really, really important. Okay, this is a cell, this purple oval. It could be a muscle cell in your body. And cells run on glucose. Your car runs on gasoline, cells run on glucose. And glucose is a sugar that's in your blood. To power your cells, the glucose has to get into the cell, but it cannot the cell membrane excludes glucose, it keeps it out. What can we do? Well, they're little channels, but if they open up, then the glucose can get inside. But to get that cell to allow the glucose to come in, I need a key. The key is insulin. And the insulin key comes from the pancreas, your pancreas, which is behind your belly button. It's a little organ that makes the insulin, the insulin attaches to the surface of the cell, just like you see here. And when that happens, insulin signaling opens up little channels and the glucose comes in. Okay, with me so far? So the insulin is like a key that lets the glucose into the cell. Here's the, the important thing, something goes wrong. Here's what goes wrong, that's my dinner. That's my lunch, that's my breakfast. I'm eating a lot of fatty foods. And yes, these are fatty foods. So what? So what does fat have to do with diabetes? Here's what. I eat fatty foods and fat particles start building up inside the cell. This is not belly fat or thigh fat. These are microscopic particles of fat that came from the foods you eat and are building up inside your cell. Now, doctors hate words like fat. It's got only one syllable. So we're going to call it intramyocellular lipid. But what that means is fat inside your muscle cells. And now the insulin key still attaches, but it does not work. When your cells are filled with fat, the insulin can't get the sugar inside. Look at that, the glucose can't get into the cell. That's insulin resistance. What am I gonna do? Well, what did we do in the research study? That it was a vegan diet, no animal products. So that means there's no animal fat. And we kept the oils really low too, didn't we? So there's not much of any kind of fat in the diet. And when you make that diet change, the fat in the cell starts to dissipate. And as the fat dissipates, insulin signaling can work again. And now you're insulin sensitive and the glucose comes in the cell. And that's why the diabetes improves and sometimes for all intents and purposes disappears. So all this idea that sugar caused diabetes, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that sugar or sodas are health food, they're not. But the problem with diabetes is insulin resistance and it starts with the buildup of fat in the cells. You can get it out bit by bit by bit 
And to the extent you do, your insulin sensitivity can return. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how long you've had diabetes. The sooner you start this, the better. But people can always take advantage of this approach. Okay, let's get a, a step more complex. I want, I want to bring you to New Haven, Connecticut. Yale University. There are two terrific researchers and a whole research team there. This is Jerry uh, Shulman and Kit Peterson. They've done really brilliant work over many decades. And I want to show you a New England Journal uh, of Medicine article that they published. What they did is they brought in 26 uh, volunteers. They all arrived at the research center. And what they did is they got a glucose tolerance test. All this means is they hand you a little cup. The cup has syrup in it. This sugary solution, you drink it down, your blood sugar starts to rise. And if it rises, but goes right back down, that means you're healthy, you're insulin sensitive, your insulin is working. But if you drank that syrup and the sugar got into your blood and their blood sugar is staying high and it's not coming down, it's just staying elevated and the sugar is coursing through your blood, you are now insulin resistant. The insulin key isn't getting the sugar out of your blood into your cell. You with me? So the researchers brought in participants. Some of them were insulin sensitive. Some of them were insulin resistant. Now, who are they? Well, first of all, they're young people. Late 20s. These are not old folks. These are young folks. Uh, are they overweight or not? No, they're not. Look, they're, they're thin. 132 pounds, 140 pounds. Do they have diabetes? No, they don't. These A1C values are healthy, teenager type A1C values. Now, let's get in the elevator, let's go down to the basement, and there is something called a magnetic resonance scanner. Magnetic, it's, if you ever had an MRI, uh, it's the same kind of technology, but we call it, in this case, magnetic resonance spectroscopy. And what we're doing with this machine is we're gonna look inside your muscle cells that buildup of fat that we were talking about, we're gonna look at it, we're gonna quantify it, okay? Here we go. Um, every, look on the left of this slide, every dot is a person. And the amount of, th those dots represent the intramyocellular lipid of individuals. Each dot is one person and that's the fat inside their muscle cells. These are the insulin sensitive people, the healthy people. These are the folks who were insulin resistant. They drank the sugar, their sugar stayed high, it wasn't, it wasn't working. And look, you can see, here's what's going on. They've got fat inside their cells. Let's look some more. These are, this is the mitochondrial activity. Do you remember mitochondria from your high school biology? Mitochondria are the burners inside your cells. And there they are in the healthy subjects, there they are in the insulin resistant subjects. Now, if, if the little photo strip on the right-hand side of your screen is getting in the way, just minimize it, or you can drag it out of the way if you like. Here is the point. These are healthy people. They were thin, they're, they're young, and they don't have diabetes or prediabetes. But when we look inside their cells, we can see they're already filling up with fat. And the fat is causing their cellular actions to not work. Their mitochondria aren't working. Those are the burners. They're not burning up fuel. They're not giving them energy. So th these people don't have diabetes yet and they're not gonna get it for another 15 years, 20 years, but the process is starting. Imagine if you, yeah, imagine if you went into a scanner right now and we did this magnetic resonance spectroscopy, looking at your muscles, looking at your liver, what would we find? Well, you know what? You could go into any high school in America. You could, here in Washington, D.C., where I'm speaking to you from, or in Omaha or Fargo or Los Angeles or Dallas. And if the high school kids of 16 or 17 years old went into a scanner, you know what we'd find? They're already accumulating fat in their muscles, fat in their liver. They are already getting insulin resistant, yes, in their teenage years. They're not gonna get diabetes now for the most part, but it's gonna happen. And it starts with the fatty chicken nuggets and the pizza that they're eating at school and the bacon and eggs that they're eating at home and the things that they thought might be healthy because they're offered at school or they're offered at home because nobody knew better. Nobody knew what you know now. But what we also know is that this is a reversible process once we have this simple knowledge that we can put to work.
Okay, and we can. Speaking of work, Geico, the car, the car insurance company, their national headquarters is right about over there, about three blocks from my office. And a number of years ago, we were working with the health director at Geico, and we did a study to see if the diet that we were describing could work not here in my laboratory, but right where people go to work. We brought in people who were overweight or had diabetes. And on their lunch hour, they could go into the cafeteria and pick up a healthy lunch. I'm talking about a plant-based lunch, a veggie burger or a um, bean burrito or veggie chili or a veggie stir fry, something like that. And then once a week, they could get a, a lecture on how to make a diet change. And it was very successful. If people had diabetes, they got better. If people had overweight, they got better. And then we did the study again, but we did it in 10 different cities at Geico facilities all around the country. Because the question is, can you make this work in Macon, Georgia? Can you make it work in Dallas, San Diego, Buffalo, New York? And the short answer was, yes, you can. But I got to tell you that uh, to work with the cafeteria managers in all these cities was a little bit of a job. Um, some of the folks running the cafeterias had to learn a little bit about what vegan means. Uh, what's wrong with this menu card? Bacon and cheese on my vegan burger? I don't think so. Let's fix that. Okay. But anyway, people following this diet, a healthy, low-fat, completely plant-based diet, they lost weight really effectively. If they had diabetes, their A1C went down, they got better. What's the moral of this story? The moral of the story is not only does it work and we know why it works, but it's something anybody could do. I don't care where you are. You don't have to be in a research study. You can put this to work. And at the end of my lecture, I'm going to show you exactly the steps that we take here in our clinic. And I hope you'll do this in your home and with your family. Okay. Um, real quickly, uh, we are not the only people who have done this. Many teams have looked at this. And this is what we call a forest plot. Um, the, it, all this means is, that if the little black box is to the left of that center line, that means A1C values go down. And as you can see in every study they do. So it's very um, consistent. Event. <laughs>